Hello, everyone. So that's right. We're going to be talking about hustle porn. And I think that we've all seen hustle porn. I'm not alone here. Each and every one of you here today, or watching online, has seen some sort of hustle porn. Perhaps the ambitious among us even enjoyed a little hustle porn to the long hours turn to burnout and dread. Don't worry, I'm not here to judge you for seeing hustle porn. Quite the opposite, in fact. I'm here to make you aware of it and give you some better alternatives, if you know what I mean. What is hustle porn? And no, it's not what you're thinking, just because it has the word porn in it. Hustle porn is the fetishization of no work-life balance, bad entrepreneurial teachings, and entrepreneurs overworking themselves to the point of depression. The Reddit co-founder, Alexis Ohanian, first coined the term, explaining how it's a plague affecting all entrepreneurs. I think this affects a lot more than just entrepreneurs, however. I think this affects each and every one of us here today, building for the future. Whether you're an artist, author, entrepreneur, student, or many different other professions, it's like that you, all the people around you have been influenced by hustle porn at a certain point. In our current society, we all want to succeed so badly that now it's an achievement to work 80 hours a week, regardless if it's actually beneficial for our health and whether it's actually productive. I brought some examples here today to show you what hustle porn may look like. Here is an Instagram post of a sports car accompanied by some wisdom such as, stay so busy you don't have time to be sad. Perfect advice, Instagram, every time. <laughs> or this chic image that says, don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. Or this last post, you already know it's gonna be good whenever it has a wolf of Wall Street scene in the background. That's how you know it's a staple of hustle porn, right? It says, this is why you're poor. Are you willing to work 100 hour weeks? Are you willing to not go on vacation for three years? Would you celebrate Christmas in January because of business? I have. I mean, he's doing it. What are you all doing here? Come on, let's, let's get to work. That last post actually was a perfect summary of hustle porn. It aims to get you rallied up behind losing all work-life balance and tries to convince you that in order to achieve your aims, you must be prepared to sacrifice everything. Why am I the one to talk about this? So to give you a bit of a backstory, I originally moved to England from Poland in 2010 with my single mum, where I knew absolutely no English. Maybe just a hello and how are you? I've actually got some pictures to show. So this picture, this is way younger than 2010. This just shows my tech background, right? Here's my credentials. Um, this picture is actually of me uh, in my first year of primary school in England. Um, and yeah, I moved to England in 2010 knowing absolutely no English. To then being able to graduate six years later, my high school, the highest English language score in my school. This experience alone taught me where hard work, commitment and ambition can take me, both academically and in life. I've applied those same principles throughout my life and been able to reach certain milestones at a much younger age. Now, while I was all ambitious and everything, it also led some bad lessons learned. It was that same kind of justification that I can do it, that same kind of opportunity, ambition that let me step outside of my comfort zone to new opportunities. But it was also the inexperience that led me to become a busy fool at times. Currently, as a 21 year old founder who at a point during this pandemic worked as a software engineer, studied at university, and started two startups all at the same time. I was the key demographic for hustle porn, and I hate to admit it, but I fell for it. That same ambition that drove me to take these opportunities also was followed by inexperience that led me to become a busy fool. Hustle porn to me was a justification, an escape, a reason I as I should be worthy of success. Surely, if I follow this advice step by step, I'll reach my goals. Sadly, as many of you already know, success is rarely a straightforward journey, full of twists and turns, lessons to be learned, obstacles to overcome. And all Hustle Pond did for me was that extra unnecessary bends. Picture me for a moment in my three by three room, just 
about the size of this diagram, where I had a bed, a desk, and a moderately sized window to at least look outside, where I ate, slept, worked during the weeks as a software engineer because we didn't get any furlough, and worked on weekends on my businesses, all for 14 months straight, with no real time to reset or relax, not only because of COVID, but because resetting meant I wasn't working according to HustlePawn. The mental and physical toll I had on me was immense. Whenever I'd feel tired, I'd feel guilty for taking a break. Whenever I'd reach small milestones, I wouldn't celebrate them because the job's not done. Whenever I'd see other people succeeding, I would feel dread, deep, deep dread. Not because of envy, but because of insecurity. Contemplating if my all is not enough, because I'm literally giving it my all. I'm sacrificing my sleep, my sanity. I've got no more hours in a day I can work. No one else was pushing me this hard. I was being my own critic, reading straight from the hustle culture rule book. Thankfully, I've been able to spot when hustle porn was taking influence within my work habits. I've since then realigned the principles I follow and the teachings I listen to. And I've seen my life, health, and productivity tremendously transform. So much so that I'm here on the stage sharing with the wider world today that there is a better way to working. Millions of people are subliminally influenced by hustle porn. If you've ever felt guilty for taking time off work, or perhaps imposter syndrome, comparing yourself to the industry standard. Could be that you or those around you have been influenced by hustle porn. I recently came across this crazy statistic from the World Health Organization that's shown that 300 million people worldwide suffer from depression, and that's the leading cause for workplace disability. That's a shocking amount. Now, while hustle porn definitely does not account for all these numbers. The teachings that it advises are making these numbers go up, not down. And that's the problem we are aware of and we're trying to solve today. Hustle porn may take the form of an Instagram post for me and my peers. But for you, it may look a little bit different. It may take the form of that one YouTube motivational speaker that's just a little bit too eager on how many hours should work. Or perhaps that LinkedIn post showing someone's sacrifices, make, feel, making you feel empty, thinking that in order to achieve your own aims, you have to reach and do the same sacrifices. Why? Why is it that these influencers are teaching us these concepts? Well, it tends to be that they themselves are victims to the same problem. Hustle porn is so prevalent within our professional teachings. The reason is, hustle porn is a sexy concept and sex sells. By following this dramatized look of an entrepreneur working day and night while his or her friend's party makes it cool. It no longer really matters if you're spending 24 hours changing the font on your website. Because instead of actually making real meaningful progress or content for your blog, because at the end of the day, you're hustling and that's all you care about. Let's all try to reflect for a minute. Last time you were really busy but somehow managed to do very little in terms of work done. Everyone's had an instance like this. During that time, did you feel tired? Did you take a minute to maybe reassess and reapproach how you're working? Or did you feel guilty for taking that break? I see a few nods. Did you at least appreciate the progress you did make? Or did you straight away concentrate, ah, oh, I've not done this, I need to do this? That's the effect hustle porn and hustle culture has had on our work habits. It's made us less productive and less happy, the worst of both worlds. Now, while I've shown that hustle culture is, and hustle porn in general is bad for your health, it seems quite obvious, right? Long hours worked, increased stress, all lead to chronic health problems. There's no doubt about that. The interesting thing is, hustle culture followers are well aware of the risks. It's kind of, ah, you know what? The success outweighs the small risk. They're willing to gamble that bit of life for the eventual success. 
Well, I'm here to speak their language and let you know that not only is hustle culture and hustle porn a detriment to your health, but it's the thing that's slowing you down. That's right, that same advice that promises you to reach your goals is actually stopping you and hindering your progress. In that case, if working 100 hour weeks is in the way, what is? The first misconception we need to get rid of is that health, success, and productivity are not independent variables. So often we're working towards success, believing that once we reach that milestone, we'll finally be satisfied and we'll finally, you know, get off the hedonic treadmill, celebrate for a little bit and go back to miserable work. That's not how it works. It's not the success that brings you the happiness. It's the happiness that brings you success. There's countless research done in this topic, which has proven that the happier you are, the more focused you become, the more lenient you are to stepping outside of your comfort zone, opening yourself to new opportunities, the more of a risk taker you become, the more productive you become, and the more likely you are to achieve your goals. One thing to comment on this is, you know, how do you achieve happiness then? That in itself is a whole topic and there's talks after me that will go into more detail. But to share my advice, the idea for baseline happiness is to ensure you're healthy physically, mentally, and socially. And one thing to comment about these three things is that hustle porn doesn't help maintain or improve any of these areas. Over the next 30 seconds, I aim to share with you the best advice I've heard from some of the wisest people I've tried to condense. I offer this, I hope for this to offer a glimpse into a better way of working and to show everyone that our working habits can change to greatly benefit not only our health, but our productivity also. I encourage everyone outside of this talk to look into the thousands of resources out there from lectures to books to videos to really improve our lives. First bit of advice, it's less important the amount of hours you work, it's more important the work you do in those hours. Listen to the Pareto principle that shows that 20% of effort accounts for 80% of the results. Stop just doing any work and hustling. Start really concentrating on what bit of work will make the biggest impact in your journey, in your goals, in your tasks. If you're reaching burnout, genuinely tired, stop. Don't keep pushing yourself over the edge. And I don't mean tired, oh, I can't be bothered getting out of bed to get this one task done. You're still going to have to do that. It doesn't mean just stop working. If you're reaching burnout, the type of burnout where your mind's racing at night, you truly feel yourself hitting limits, then stop, don't keep pushing on. Working on burnout, as someone has once said, is like driving a Lamborghini in first gear. It'll only frustrate you with how slow you're going and how you know you're capable of going much faster. If I was going to summarize all of this advice into one phrase that we can all take from, the idea of balance, the idea of health, Pareto, and stopping at burnout, it's to reset, reflect, and work on the right things. If we all just take a moment to reset, step back, reflect, look at where we came from, look at where we're going, plan our direction of attack, and then work on the right things, work on the things that make the biggest impact on the crucial work that needs to be done. We'll all become more productive and happier. You'll see the work you once dreaded become joy. Let's all try to reset, reflect, and work on the right things. Now, I've made you aware of hustle porn now. And while it may be prevalent, it's up to you whether you listen to it. Reaching your goals is already difficult. Don't make it harder by listening to bad advice like hustle porn. You know, it, reaching your goals is going to be full of twists and turns, failures you learn from, obstacles to overcome. There's no point making it more uphill. Remember that success comes from work, experience, and skills compounding over time. And those things increase over time because of opportunities. That's where the luck comes from. And because it takes time, and because you want to compound it as long as possible, you want to introduce balance into your life to go the distance. Now this is important. For any of us to build anything for the future, we need to stay sane in a world full of noise by setting sound principles 
and lessons and advice we abide by. Because we're not only in the age of mass information, but we're also in the age of misinformation. Yes, there's fake news, and there's also fake advice. Let's end this talk by reflecting back on that Wolf of Wall Street post I was talking about, with our newly found knowledge. Let's say that everything it says here is true, and the person who originally wrote that, let's name them Bob, did do 100 hour weeks. And Bob did not celebrate Christmas in December because of business. The whole mantra of everyone wants to be a winner but not everyone has what it takes is false and very far from the truth. In reality, it's misinterpreted. It doesn't tend to be the person who works the longest, it's the person who's most effective. The real truth is, Bob could have very, real, could have very well reached that same success with better work-life balance. And funnily enough, he could have probably reached it faster and gone even further. Hell, maybe he could have even celebrated Christmas in December. Thank you all for coming. And remember to reset, reflect, and work on the right things. Thank you.